ಯೋಂತ ಪ್ರವಿಶ ಮಮ ವಾಚ ಮಿಮಾಂ ಪ್ರಸುಪ್ತಾನ್ ಸಂಜೀವಯ ತಕಿಲ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಧರಾ ಸ್ವಧಾಂನಾ ಅನ್ಯಾಂ ಸಹಸ್ತಚರಣ ಶ್ರವಣಾತ್ವಗಾದೀನ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾನ್ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಪುರುಷಾಯ ತುಭ್ಯಂ ಕಥಾಂಚನ ಸ್ಮೃತೆ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ದುಸ್ಕರ ಸುಕರ ಭವೆತ್ ವಿಸ್ಮೃತೆ ವಿಪರೀತ ಸ್ಯಾ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಮಾಮಿ ತಂ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಗೌರ್ವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮೇಘ್ನಾ ಸಾಗರ್ ಬಲ್ದೇವ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ರಾಹುಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟೀಚ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಟುಡೇ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಇನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ವಿಸಿಟ್ ದ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಅಮೇಝಿಂಗ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಪೊಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಫಾಲೋ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ನಾವು ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ನಾವು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ಕಾನ್ ISKCON is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. How many of you are coming here for the first time over the Nico village? Wow, so many of you. So when generally when people, they have these two common questions. Hmm, what is this all about? Or what do you stand for? What is ISKCON? Or what is your philosophy? Or what do you do? And then when we explain that, then the next obvious question is, then how do you do it? So what and how are the common questions um, in any spiritual path? And you go to... Um, you know sadguru's isha yoga or ravi shankar's uh, sudarshan kriya or siddhi samadhi yoga of rishi prabhakar or brahma kumari they go anywhere they have some what in place and they have how so we practice what is known as bhakti yoga you go to any iskon center uh, all over the world all practitioners we practice bhakti yoga and bhakti yoga has some amazing cardinal principles on which it is based upon so i'll share this six what's with you and for each there is a corresponding how and then i'll briefly present it to you on a platter on a menu you see what is it and then maybe we can have some discussions depending on the questions that arise in your mind on these six principles is that okay so these six principles are easy to remember with an acronym b h a k t s bucks <laughs> i just was i was thinking is there is there a way we could uh, put it into an acronym so i got an acronym so these are the six things we do first is um first and most important foundational principle of bhakti yoga now before that you know yoga what is yoga connection with the lord right yujyate so sanskrit word yujyate is what from where we derive yoga so to connect the individual soul with the lord is bhakti yoga is yoga and there are many ways to connect with the lord and we practice bhakti yoga so in bhakti what happens the first principle is bhakti yoga is beyond self it is beyond the self generally most paths talk about all about my own world my feelings my 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 peace of mind it's all about me ultimately but in bhakti yoga at some point of time we need to understand it's not about me it's we go beyond the self the reason why we suffer in this world is because of duality constantly you know happiness distress this world is a world of duality dwandva summer winter rich poor like that and this causes suffering and then when and this dwandha arises because primarily we are focused on the self when we transcend the self when we go beyond the self then the sufferings of this world don't don't inflict us for the so the overall process whatever we discuss eventually it is about going beyond the self it's not about my feeling happy my 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 life my worries it's not about i me and mine you know just like you have a 10 rupee coin if you keep it too close to your eyes in fact the afternoon sun's vision can be blocked if it's too close to the eyes now sometimes you can't see the sun because the coin is too close to your eyes but is the coin bigger than the sun 
It's a ridiculous question to ask. The sun is what quadrillion times bigger than that small 10 rupee coin. But still, this coin has the potency to block our vision of the sun if we keep it too close to our eyes. So often what happens is we keep our issues, our problems, our worries so close to our consciousness. It's all about my worries, my problems that we are unable to appreciate the vast goodness that lies beyond myself. There is something extraordinary that, that is waiting for us to explore. But if you are stuck on myself, we can't access it. So this is the first. Let's know that I have to go beyond myself, beyond the self. And how do we do this? For the first principle is beyond self by scriptures, by, by books of wisdom. Scriptures are what help us transcend a world which is only centered on self. So you'll see here in Govardhan Eco Village and go to any ISKCON centers. They always read the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ramayana, Mahabharata. These books are very, very potent. They contain a lot of wisdom. So when we render uh, an oral reception to this sound vibration, we learn to transcend the self. See, generally what happens in a spiritual path is we, first of all, improve our awareness. We understand that I am separate from my mind. See, mind is, just imagine mind next to you. A huge entity who is constantly uh, talking. And we are just following what the mind is telling us. Our identity is merged with the mind. So what happens generally when we practice a spiritual path is we learn to separate ourselves from our mind. We are able to see the mind for what it is. Oh, this is what the mind is proposing. It's like, you know, like I write my journals every day. Today morning as I was writing my journal, I realized my eyes are inside my body, but I'm only seeing the world outside. Hmm. But if I take my eyes outside and like the camera, I put it facing me, and then I can see the world inside. <laughs> so when my eyes are inside, I'm seeing the world outside. When I take my eyes outside, I can see the world inside. But then that's not sufficient. Spiritual life, there is more than simply seeing our inner world. Imagine you, don't, you have eyes not simply as a video camera, but you have eyes in terms of a satellite, which can see not just your inside and outside, but it can see everyone and your connection with the whole universe. So the first principle of Bhakti Yoga is going beyond the self by scriptures and understanding the vastness of this cosmos and aligning our lives to that, that cosmic force, that energy. That is the first principle of Bhakti Yoga. So when we read scriptures or when we hear them like what you're doing right now, this is an exercise to connect to this reality. You know, we are like that uh, frog in the well. You know the story? There was a frog in the well and he thought his well is everything. Once a frog came from the Atlantic Ocean and he said, my Atlantic Ocean is very huge. So the frog said, oh, it must be two times bigger than my well. He said, no, it's much, much bigger. So the frog in the well said, oh, maybe 10 times bigger. Then finally, he was incredulous. He couldn't believe that there is something bigger than his well. He said, maybe it's 100 times bigger than my well. So that's how many times we, we can't imagine a reality beyond my world. And scriptures help us explore this. And you'll see in every Bhakti Yoga center of ISKCON, you'll see scriptures reading happens to explore a world beyond ourselves. And that also ends our suffering. Because transcendental knowledge is very potent. Now imagine two, two patients in a hospital Two beds, bed A and bed B. And you see both of them are screaming in pain. Ah, oh, Both of them are screaming in pain. And you think both of them are in a similar situation. But there is a difference. Patient in bed A, he knows what is his disease. It has been diagnosed and the treatment has started. The patient B, his disease is unknown. And all experiments are going on. Who is better off? The first one. Because he at least knows what is happening. The treatment has started. So many times, externally you may see a Bhakti Yoga practitioner is also suffering in this world. Even a non-spiritualist is also suffering. Everybody goes through suffering. No one is spared. But transcendental knowledge helps us go beyond the self and access a reality which 
not only eliminates all our karmic reactions but also helps us align ourselves to this beautiful reality we call krishna for this is the first principle beyond self by scriptures second bhakti yoga is founded on humility we want to receive we don't want to achieve we don't do yoga to achieve control of mind we don't practice spirituality to achieve some high state of consciousness we are we want to practice humility and receive there's a difference between achieve and receive and humility also in this context means uh, generally it's it's like cultivating self effacing natures you know like apne aap ko mita dena not in a negative sense it's not that you know we we become a nervous wreck and we are diffident and we suffer from inferiority complex no Ulti- in the ultimate analysis we are nobody <laughs> it's just that we accept it and and we we connect to this insignificance and you know what the best part is humility in this insignificance you experience deep contentment it's an amazing contrast generally in this world the advertisement is that you want you want to enjoy you want to be happy you want to be somebody significant but on a spiritual path in insignificance we achieve completeness like i want to share one experience you know once i was going to perth and it's it's like even in australia it is considered as a god forsaken place <laughs> it's like far west and and i remember the day before i left i was in this hanging garden in in mumbai looking at the sky meditating for a long time around from 4:30 to almost 8:30 in the evening and i as the sun set and darkness you know it was completely dark i saw some stars and then i saw a plane flying in the sky you know swallowed by the heavens just i was just i was just present and mindful and the next day i was on a plane to perth what 8000 miles from mumbai and as we were descending i saw this vast stretch of land and i saw i thought maybe somebody like me sitting there and then when i landed i went to my host house and in the night i was sleeping and i saw out of the window the huge sky i remember that experience i had as if you know time froze for me as i saw the stars and the moon and i saw an occasional plane glide past in the sky i suddenly felt a sense of belongingness and complete insignificance i felt nobody in the presence of this giant cosmos but I, at the same time i realized that i was with these stars just yesterday in mumbai and now i am with them here that means i belong to this universe i belong here i have a place here but at the same time that vastness completely humbled me so this is an amazing contrast a state of i am nobody but i am blissful during the covid 8 months i was staying with my mother and this is an experience which i am going to cherish for the rest of my life and we used to have these daily practices of studying scriptures and chanting and she is she was very sick so i was managing a big house and 8 months i was with her and then at one day there was a cyclone and uh, and it is an ancient traditional laws in a village setting and uh, the coconut trees were swinging erratically and there was a huge long snake it fell on the roof a terrace where i was sitting and then i rushed down and that snake slithered and then that i had a mosquito net that just flew away and then suddenly the lights went off and my mother was lying on the bed and i told and then and then it was it was raining heavily for a long time but then now the electricity went off and it was started a new cyclone started and we didn't know what to do and then my mother is big and i couldn't and i didn't know what to do and she said wait and then at at that point of time you know i honestly felt the sword of death hanging above my head i'm not exaggerating it was it is a very uh, i'm not able to describe the whole situation it was very scary and then my mother she held my hand and then she said son if this is it let it be <laughs> i don't know what she meant she said if this is it let it be and then i looked at her and then we i realized actually where will you go you know even if i take her out outside the uh, it was pitch dark and it was we didn't know what to do it was a helpless situation but 
amazing like remember at that point of time suddenly i felt a certain kind of peace engulf my heart it was as if i belong to eternity I, it was as if theek hai yaar i am ready <laughs> i'm scared of death i'm being honest it's not that i want to die but it just that at that moment that experience i can't explain in words it was a sense of being insignificant i mean this universe is going to go on without me it was a state of feeling completely one with the universe i was like ah oh, theek hai yaar i'm ready and then i held my mother's hand and we were just in a complete state of peace and then when the storm abated we went around setting things in order and then i realized because of my practices every day it helped me those practices helped me at that time because i've been constantly hearing about the need to practice humility and i'm not that i'm humble it's just that the the importance of being insignificant dawned on me at that moment because i am actually insignificant so how do we develop this humility in iskon we emphasize a lot on service for so the second principle in effect is humility by service you see the definition of bhakti you go to any place how they define bhakti as devotion or emotion or feelings or prayers but shila prabhupa the founder of iskon he defined bhakti as devotional service service is inseparable in bhakti without service we don't understand bhakti yoga it's a attitude of giving the attitude of service and you know the best the best experiences we get when we genuinely cultivate a mood of service like we have one uh, very top psychologist deepak he was when he was a medical student in jj we used to go there for our programs we used to carry kichdi halwa and give classes to the boys and then serve prasadam and he used to come for the class every class he would have so many questions even before the class ended he would say what about this what about this he was respectful but he was we, you know in vedanta sutra there is a saying which says atato brahma jigyasa always ask questions enquire about the truth atato brahma jigyasa this is a statement in vedanta sutra but when he would raise his hand i would say atato bhayankar jigyasa <laughs> <laughs> bhayankar means terrible <laughs> so atato bhayankar jigyasa and he would be like always shooting questions so what happened one day as he raised his hand gauranga prabhu the one was giving class he said wait deepak wait i know you have a lot of questions can you do something for me this february we are all going to barsana man mandir this is the place in barsana in vrindavan every year we have a i camp where we treat the brijvasis and there are cataract surgeries done and a lot of services are there and you are a doctor anyway So why don't you go for this uh, camp, medical camp, in Barsana, and assist all the doctors and be with them for one month? So he volunteered. He agreed. And um, after one month, he came back, and as usual, the class started. And after the class, any questions? And he's sitting like all of you. And I'm looking at him. Hey, puchho. Ata to bhayankar ji kya sab puchho question. then finally goram prabhu had to tell him deepak what about you are a store of questions fully satisfied prabhu ji <laughs> everything is revealed sab khush ho gaya service is magical it's amazing you know even when i reluctantly serve <laughs> i'll tell you when when i joined the monastery my mother would because i used to stay at kaf parade close by so my mom would come every saturday i joined in the month of march every saturday evening she would get me a big bag of mangoes every saturday and then and we only had one small box where we keep all our belongings two dhoti kurtas few books and bead bag and i would some of stuff that mangoes inside and whole week i would eat them one by one and the next saturday again she would be there with a bag of mangoes i remember one saturday when she when i kept that mangoes there and after a few hours i removed one to eat and i saw another brahmachari walk by in the ail of the ashram and i looked at him and i said uh, <clears throat> you know out of politeness not that i really wanted to share <laughs> i said you would like a mango he said yeah thank you and he took it and he said but i have taken your share right i said don't no, no, i have one i removed one more mango from the locker although i had a lots but i said i have one for me so he said okay then let us 
So we offered it silently to the Lord and we were about to eat. Another brahmachari came by. And he said, wow, mango party is going on. I said, aapko chahiye? He said, what about you? I said, I have one more. <laughs> and then another brahmachari came. And in, and in three, four minutes, there were a lot of people and the whole bag was out. And we all sat, you know, like this on the floor. Some of us sat on the locker and we were eating mangoes. For 15 minutes, we were laughing, talking about something. And then after that, they all left. And I was alone there and I cleaned up the place and I sat and I realized mangoes are anyway sweet, delicious, but they never tasted sweeter. Something, something amazing happened. That day I realized that even when I reluctantly give, there is something joyful, there is something divine. What to speak of actually giving with the desire to love and serve. So service is amazing, whether it is Deepak, going to serve in the remote villages, Vrindavan, or, uh, you know, me sharing mangoes. In fact, one of the greatest uh, Indian, uh, Bharat Ratna is the greatest civilian award. One of the first ones to win, get that award was Madan Mohan Malviya, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, was the founder of Banaras Hindu University. He's a great lawyer. You know, sometime we'll discuss about his stories. He was so powerful that, as a lawyer, he was so uh, terrific in his practice that British lords would... Sometimes the judges would stand up in, in uh, respect to him, with respect, you know, giving him respect. He was so good. And Madan Mohan Malvi had some spiritual questions. So he came to our center, Srila Prabhupada's guru, Bhakti Siddhan Sarafti Thakur's Gaudiya Mat. He had some questions, philosophical questions. So the simple monks there, you know, they didn't care about your big position. or So they said, oh, our guru is not here. Would you like to join us uh, for some time in cleaning the pots? <laughs> we are doing this service in the ashram. So he was humble. He said, yeah, why not? So he joined them, he washed the pots and then it went on for a few hours. Then they sat down and then actually what happened before that, he actually met Bhakti Siddhan Saravati Thakur. He said, you are a great spiritual teacher. I have some questions for you. Can you answer them? Bhakti Siddhan Saravati Thakur said, I'm really sorry, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya Ji. You're such an important person, but I have to rush for some important work now. Can you meet my disciples? They are competent enough to answer your questions. And he was humble enough and he went to the disciples. And the disciples said, Panditji, why don't we will sit and answer your questions, but first, why don't you join us in some service? And he agreed. And he cleaned up, he cleaned all the pots. And after that, they all sat down. And the disciples said, why don't you take some prasad? So they had lunch. And then they said, Yes, Panditji, what are your questions? He said, Kuch prashna nahi. That satisfaction, that contentment is real. So, anyway, these are the two principles. What is the first principle? Beyond self by scriptures, wisdom books. Second, humility by service. And third is appreciation by practicing thankfulness. Appreciation, see this is this requires a little simplicity. Generally, we are very cynical in life. We, we, we are constantly judging and constantly you know, analyzing everybody with our mind. Appreciation means trusting others' goodness, trusting that there is people have goodness in them and seeing the good. And appreciation can also be at different levels. I've done one exercise in our GLAD session once. I don't know if some of you remember. We may we we re, we've remembered someone whom we want to appreciate in our context. If somebody has done something good for me, we appreciate that person in relation to what he has done or what he or she has done for me. And in the second round, we explored how we need to appreciate that person independent of me. And then in the third round, we discussed how we can appreciate that person in connection to the universe, how this person is embodying some principles and how this principle has been seen in action at other places in the universe. So when we have this vision of appreciation, the world appears to be a beautiful place. Vishwam Purna Sukhayate, the scriptures explain. So appreciation is uh, an extremely powerful uh, principle. And how do we cultivate this mode of appreciation? By a daily practice of gratitude, thankfulness. And I know thankfulness can also become monotonous because I can't thank my parents every day. You know That emotion doesn't come. So what I do is I practice what is called as fresh gratitude. What happened in the last 24 hours for which I really want to thank the Lord? And that fresh gratitude keeps me always looking out for the good things in life. And in the night when I write down the, the things I'm grateful for in the last 24 hours, I'm like, 
I'm very, uh, I'm very much energized by that exercise. So gratitude exercises helps us appreciate the world and keeps us always in the mood of giving and service. And uh, an amazing thing about gratitude is, you know, if 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 you constantly thank God for what you are getting in life, at some point of time you land up saying. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, God. Now, inadvertently, you won't even realize when you would say this prayer. God, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? That would spontaneously come out of your heart. And once you say that statement, how can I serve? What can I? Just like you know, if somebody has done something good for you, if you thank someone for the ten gifts he has given you, the eleventh, the eleventh thing you would thank after thanking him for the ten things, you would say. what can i do for you similarly if you are thanking god every day the gratitude exercise at the end of it you know at one day you will say i want to do something for you krishna what can i do for you and that is bhakti yoga that is when our bhakti uh, we experience the all the wonders that are described about bhakti yoga and many people ask me if you practice gratitude will we develop love for god i say you that that's later but there is something you will get before that before you get love of god gratitude practices will help you realize oops i'm so sorry <laughs> i thought my phone was off i'm grateful your phone rang <laughs> this is the bhajan of barsana actually man mandir maharaj used to sing this bhajan so i'm sorry karna ta inkar magar ikrar tumhi se kar this is a famous bollywood song so so the song says what i didn't want to say yes the lover is telling the beloved i didn't want i i did i wanted to say no 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 but i landed up saying yes why this happened because when you realize somebody loves you so much then you love that person so this is how gratitude helps so these are the three principles the first one beyond self by scriptures the second one humility by service third one appreciation by thankfulness and fourth this is krishna relationship bhakti is all about a relationship with god or krishna krishna relationship by remembering him or praying to him krish you know the definition of krishna in uh, vedic scriptures very interesting definition krishna is defined as akila rasamrita murti is a personification of all rasa rasa means anybody knows what is the meaning of the word rasa rasa means juice or also it means mellow taste so we all are looking for rasa we all are looking for taste like if a mango is kept here we are attracted to that mango not because of its color or its shape we are attracted because of the rasa taste so we are attracted to relationships we are attracted to cricket football and whatever music because everything in this world gives us some taste some rasa and krishna is defined as someone who will give you that who will give you complete flavor rasa and the rasa of this world it is tasty but after some time it goes down it's like chewing a bubble gum you know when you take a bubble gum initially bahut juice rehta hai us you see children and they are chewing it and then boring and then what they do make a bubble wo bhi boring lagta hai and then a bigger bubble then a bigger bubble finally it bursts and then it stuck it gets stuck on the face you seen that they remove the the stuck thing from their face for so this is how the relationships in this world work they give us rasa initially wow so much juice so much happiness and then drag and after that it gets stuck in our consciousness but krishna is akhila rasamrita murti when you connect with krishna the rasa keeps increasing every day otherwise how do you explain devotees chanting the same hari krishna mantra for the last 50 plus years in iskon in fact in the mornings if you come to our temple we not only sing the same hari krishna mantra we sing in the same melody also <laughs> like gorwani prabhu's kirtan it's intoxicating there is one kirtan which which is on my mobile i play it on loop the kirtan is sang in dallas in 
it's a two hour kirtan same melody you know that your pushya abhishek melody that one i i just keep it going on and on it's the same hari krishna same melody and he sings it so well so you have you have devotees in iskon chanting the same hari krishna mantra every day can you imagine singing the same bollywood song every day in fact the stories the plots the movies keep changing you don't read the same news if you are tr- you don't re- when you say breaking news it's not the news about of last week it's it's what's happening now but if you see krishna stories we are reading the same krishna past time which happened 5000 years ago and we are still deriving amazing joy like this year janmashtami is coming up in august and we are going to celebrate krishna's birthday and we are going to discuss krishna's past times krishna entering mathura to kill kamsa and meeting chanura mushtika and the different demons it got to be the same story same krishna entering same mathura in the same way and killing kamsa in the same way it's not that we want to tweak the story little bit this year and make krishna enter mathura in a helicopter and <laughs> and do something different no we don't have to change anything because krishna is akhila rasamrita murti he is an embodiment of rasa so we invite you to have a relationship with krishna so in bhakti yoga if you come to iskon we'll never beat around the bush our usp is krishna we want to offer you krishna experience a relationship with krishna see how your life changes dramatically with rasa i know some of you may be little reluctant because generally we think spirituality means understanding god in his formless aspect hai na god has no form sab kuch formless we don't deny it in fact the scriptures explain that the absolute truth is formless the scriptures also explain that the absolute truth is formless the absolute truth also has a, an existence in your heart as paramatma he is formless as brahman and he also is a person as bhagwan all three aspects are there just like the sun is present everywhere right now the sun is here but not the sun the sun is present in the form of sun shine similarly god is everywhere he is formless he is present everywhere as god shine he is there as brahman but sun can be seen through a telescope you know you can see the layers and all of that so you can realize god in your heart as paramatma and you can also realize god as a person like you go imagine you go to the sun planet and meet mr vivashwan the president of sun planet it's like it's like understanding the bhagwan aspect how many of you have tasted gulab jamun in life everyone oh gulab jamun in iskon we call them as iskon bullets shila prabhupad gave that name so gulab jamun see imagine somebody um, has never tasted gulab jamun and he is told tomorrow i am going to serve you the most tasty delicious indian sweet gulab jamun so you invite three friends to your house for tasting gulab and you are preparing gulab jamun so the first one enters and he smells wow gulab jamun this is gulab jamun kya fragrance hai i have experienced gulab jamun and he leaves thank you so he has got an experience of gulab jamun but is only experienced the smell ah oh, that's it the second person waits he says let me go to the kitchen and he sees you are making gulab jamun and he and he touches the gulab jamun and says oh itna soft hai darkish brownish wow so he has more experience than the first person so the first person's experience of gulab jamun is like the brahman realization is the it's his understanding but not complete the second one is understanding the paramatma he is understanding more but the third person the intelligent one stays back he smells the gulab jamun he touches the gulab jamun but he gets the complete experience when he tastes it similarly god we experience in completeness when we have the personal aspect of god as krishna and how do we uh, <coughs> do we develop a relationship with krishna remembrance or prayers our whole process is based on prayers constantly you know it's like you make a phone call to person you like like my one of my friends hari krishna prabhu is calling me now now if you love someone and you know there are people who who call their lover or beloved three times a day four times a day when you're in another city and because of that calling that person you are in touch with them and you feel connected so what devotees do in hari krishna movement we keep calling krishna when we offer prayers it's like we are connecting with krishna 
and the scriptures are filled with prayers and verses how to remember krishna shamam hiranya paridim vanamalya barha datu pravala natavesha manu vratam se vinyasta hasta itare na dunanam abjam karunot palalaka kapola mukhab jahasam the bhagavatam explains describes how you can remember krishna you know krishna's complexion is dark monsoon cloud and he's wearing dazzling golden color dress vanamalya bari has a he has a garland of forest flowers he has a beautiful peacock feather tucked in his hair and dhatu pravala natavesham he has got the dust of vrindavan smeared on his cheeks because he's playing with his friends natavesham anuvratam and he's standing like an expert actor with his friends and what is he doing with his hand vinyasta hasta itare na dunanam abjam and he's got he's twirling a lotus flower very dexterously and he has his right hand on the shoulder of his friends and with a corner of his eyes is looking at the gopis he is also composing a poem and he is doing so many things and he is giving joy to everyone karunot palalaka kapola mukha and he has got beautiful lily flowers stuck on his ears and he is giving an enchanting smile so like this there are techniques there are verses given which can help us remember the lord See, ultimately, bhakti yoga, like any other, see any other yoga, like we have some yoga teachers here, right? So, what do you teach your uh, students when? Now, how do you tell them to do yoga? When you do yoga, you do two things, right? You stretch your body, but you can't keep stretching your body. Oh, you also you breathe normally, right? I remember the first time I tried yoga, I was, and I got more exhausted. And the teacher told me, you have to breathe normally. So, come, stay here, masanam, arey, aaram se, aaram se, breathe normally, right? but i can't just sit and say i'm breathing normally no yoga thoda stretch bhi karo stretch bhi you stretch and also breathe normally right similarly in bhakti yoga that stretching is compared to service do service always but only service is like stretching and controlling your breath you you render service and the breathing is compared to remembering krishna prayers so just like in yoga we remember uh, we breathe and we stretch our bodies similarly in bhakti yoga we remember krishna and we also render service so these are the four principles first one beyond self by scripture second humility by service third appreciation by gratitude or thankfulness fourth krishna relationship by remembering or prayers and fifth is you know generally what happens people think oh now i have come to iskon it's all about krishna i should be happy but then when we go through trials and miseries or traffic jams irritability so that one very important principle in bhakti yoga is tolerance you know we don't look for shortcuts in the in fact gita begins arjuna's first instruction krishna gives to arjuna in 2.14 is matra sparsha astu kaunteya शीतोष्ण सुख दुखदा आगमापाय नो निस्तिस्व भारत तिथिस्व लर्न टॉलरेन्स टॉलरेट नॉट जस्ट डिस्ट्रेस टॉलरेट हैपीनेस ऑल्सो कृष्णा इज टेलिंग टॉलरेट सी वी आर लिविंग इन अ वेरी स्टिम्युलेटेड वर्ल्ड यू नो कॉन्स्टेंटली वॉन्ट बी स्टिम्युलेटेड एजुटेटेड वी आर अनेबल टू एप्रिशिएट द जॉय ऑफ सिटिंग इन ऑन अर्थ इन अ नैचुरल सिटिंग विद नथिंग टू डू we we constantly want to be doing something we have become human doing we are no more human being <laughs> so tolerate see unfortunately spirituality is also for many of us it's all about uh it's something we want something easy something stim- that stimulates us there is a different between easy spirituality and deep experience in between there is something called as effort we need to put in effort and effort means tolerance sabr karo patience and how do we practice tolerance tolerance by learning to embrace pain we have never been taught to embrace pain we always been taught from childhood we've been taught try to remove misery any inconvenience remove it some of seek relief we are relief seekers from childhood but as you get older you will realize there are some things you just can't escape you just can't circumvent it 
you know just like i don't know if you have tried this i've tried this sometimes when i'm in pain or distress or something going terribly wrong instead of trying to forget it by you know watching youtube or busying ourselves with whatsapp messages try to live with that pain just stop everything and just be it's painful the mind may run right but just hold on just be there you know after some time what will happen just like the eye of the storm there is peace they say similarly in that in that pain you will find peace and in hari krishna movement bhakti yoga it is a joyful process and it is very sweet but it is not sweet like the kheer or the sweet rice it is sweet like khatta meetha wala you know it is like wo oh, crack jack biscuit tha oh, khatta meetha it's not sweet you know if it's very sweet you can't take much khatta meetha kya hota hai irresistible because krishna is not somebody who is only going to tell you i love you and is only going to give you joy is also going to give you sauce just like you know one grahastha was telling me that is is convinced that his wife loves him but he says but prabhu she always gives me sauce every day i get feedback <laughs> but i know she loves me but feedback bhi milta hai <laughs> so krishna is going to reveal to you in your heart as you practice he is going to reveal to your own inadequacies and to come to peace with ourselves it requires you to have the ability like lord shiva who drank halahal you know in hindi there is a saying zeher marne ke liye thoda sa par zinda rehne ke liye bahut peena padta hai poison you need only little to die you need to take only little but to live you need to drink a lot more so tolerance is an integral part of bhakti yoga practice tolerating not just uncomfortable situations sometimes are unavoidable but also our own because you realize after some time of practice that oh abhi krishna bahut dur hai theek <laughs> hai sabr karo patience for this is how many five and the last principle is the most important sankirtan sankirtan by mindfulness by being present sankirtan means what anybody knows the meaning of the word sankirtan sun means coming together kirtan is glorifying the lord sankirtan in a simple sense also means this is this is sankirtan now when we come together there is tremendous amount of spiritual energy awakened ananda ambudi vardanam pratipadam purnamrata swadanam this is an ocean of joy because tolerating always can be difficult we need some happiness also sankirtan is like it gives you anesthesia it gives you joy it gives it everything one devotee was telling me that when he comes to temple he says prabhu my life is so many challenges but when i sit in the class on a sunday morning i see so many people are sitting oh i see he is also there oh she is also there i know them oh they are going through so much suffering he is also here good all of us are here okay so that is he says i feel some kind of camaraderie some kind of support that we all are suffering but we are there for each other because of the sound vibration being the center the holy names of the lord being center during the tsunami that struck uh, sri lanka chennai you know some places 2004 december his holiness shri indradamna swami maharaj and his team went to sri lanka and the army general there he told indradamna swami maharaj that there is no shortage of relief you know everywhere the world people are sending us clothes and food and everything but people's morale has been completely devastated they are like so shaken by the tsunami because their house is gone everything is gone they just so bewildered can you do something to uplift their morale and indradamna swami did sankirtan he and his team did sankirtan in every village and the whole village was dancing chanting and none of them would leave indradamna swami and his team to go to the next village they said idhar hi roo aap and they, every village they had a tearful farewell because that sankirtan is so potent and i have experienced it myself so many times recently we were traveling in a train from vrindavan and uh, there was a couple in front of us husband wife and they had some altercation they were irritated we could easily see they were kuch to jhagda ho gaya tha we could see. it was obvious so then what we did goin prabhu of the few devotees were there we all did kirtan and the other devotees joined and so the both of them were sitting in one corner and we were doing kirtan and after some time we could see they were they got so much into the kirtan they were smiling and in the evening time you know she took out that thepla chutney and all of that and she is giving me so much love <laughs> we could see the whole thing had changed sankirtan had dissolved dissolved many things 
Sankirtan is extremely powerful. It because Sankirtan embodies the principle of surrender. Every spiritual path talks about surrender. You know, it's like you're riding on a chariot, and uh, you know the horses are going everywhere, but then you control the reins of the horses. But at some point of time, you realize, oh, I can't do this, and then again you let go. But this time, the horses don't go independently. You let go the reins, but you call out to the Lord, Krishna, please take charge of my horses. So before we come to spiritual life, we let our mind and senses go wild, and then we come to the spiritual path. We try to control our mind and senses, and after some years, we realize, Krishna, I can't control. Krishna, I let go the horses, but this time you take over, and that's Sankirtan. We allow Krishna to be the puppeteer. We allow him to take charge of our lives, and that's a beautiful experience. That's most fulfilling when we place our fragile lives in the hands of the Lord. Krishna varanam tusha Krishna sango panga astra parshadam egyai sankirtana praye rejanti hi sumedasa. Most intelligent people in this day of age and day and age of kali would take up the sankirtan path because Krishna has come in the form of his holy names. Kali kale nama rupe Krishna avatar. So sankirtan is the most potent way, and every iskon center you will see sankirtan happening. Sankirtan helps us. Uh, connect with the Lord helps us practice surrender. So these are the six principles I wanted to share with you, and we can ask some questions. But I'll let me summarize. What are the first? What are the what are the first principle? Beyond self by scriptures. Second, humility by service. Third, appreciation by thankfulness. Fourth, Krishna relationship by remembrance or prayers. Fifth. tolerance by embracing pain and sixth sankirtan by mindful being present hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare any questions or comments koi question nahi प्रसाद अच्छा था इसलिए कंप्लीटली सैटिस्फाइड एक्चुअली ईच ऑफ देम इज लाइक अ सूत्र वी कैन यू नो वी कैन गो डीप इन टू ईच ऑफ दिस पॉइंट्स बट आई जस्ट थॉट आई प्रेजेंट दिस बिकॉज यू कम फॉर दिस मंथली ग्लैड क्लासेस मेनी ऑफ यू आई सी यू देर सो इफ यू सी गुआ फिरा के वी नो एवरी क्लास वी आर कवरिंग वन ऑफ द सिक्स ओनली वी कवर दिस सिक्स पॉइंट्स ओनली Ultimately, you go to any scorn preacher, any scorn program. Ultimately, it's all about these six principles coming in different ways. Once again, my sincere gratitude to all of you for coming to Govardhan Eco Village, and uh, I wish we could come here for two days retreat rather than one day, because the Mangalarati is. <laughs> we'll have next time. I think we'll do it because here evening we'll have uh, kirtan. There's nice kirtan here. There's the Muna Arti. So this was just a this was just a wedding teaser. appetizer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Asa, who asked question? Yeah. We spoke about tolerance. Uh, now tolerance. There can be a very thin line between tolerating pain that's in your destiny or something that's in your path, your life journey, or your choices. But tolerating wrongdoing oh, by yeah. someone, it could yeah. be a family, it could oh, be yeah. the society. Where does one know? Uh, what is the the moral compass or the spiritual compass that helps you understand that this is the wrongdoing that is not to be tolerated? Mm. and this is a part of your journey or a choice you made and this pain will have to endure where does one find mm. that balance if <clears throat> there is abuse obviously there is no see tolerance forgiveness is generally not a not an excuse for our inability to address our problems see if you have if you are a victim of abuse and if you forgive and tolerate 
actually it gets more toxic so obviously we need to uh, address it at the same time as we are healing the past wounds tolerance helps us move forward with grace and dignity so when you're talking about tolerance you're talking about moving forward but for the past wounds we need to do the needful now how do we do it i i realize that most of the things we learn by trial and error it's not a magic pill that i know okay you done this so i i can't tolerate or this i need to tolerate most of the things in life in bhakti yoga i've learned through trial and error and secondly by consulting others who are more senior or more experienced in life these two principles have helped me understand what i need to tolerate like for example there is something which i can't share here which i've been struggling with for a long time so i thought should i tolerate it or should i fix it so finally after a lot of struggle i realized i can't do it i just gave up so i went to my mentor and i said what do i do so then he said something profound which has stayed with me for many years he said if you after trying so much if you know if you are unable to change something after so much effort then that means it's not something to be changed it's something to be accepted now i wouldn't have known it in the first time so i i tried fixing it it was not working and i tried again i took hell not working now i have made peace with it so i think it's trial and error and also consulting others helps if there's no magic formula i don't think anyone can give you okay this is it but yes abuse must be immediately you must immediately seek help in, in case of this is a very uh, physically tangibly easily recognizable wrong doing that Correct. we're talking about a lot of things are very subtle, subtle yeah they are not visible a lot of people are not even aware that they are being subject oh, yeah. or they are victimizing some way of some sort of passive aggressive behavior or some sort of wrong doing which is more uh, which is not so visible but for example if you are not at the receiving end but you are seeing something and the person who is a victim does oh, not yeah. feel he is a victim or he feels that this is my journey oh, yeah. so is it is it my place to um intervene or when the person is not seeking he doesn't think that there is anything wrong that's a relationship or you know that's a society that's how they meant yeah. to be in but you can see that this is not the way it should be mm. now there is no right or wrong and nobody can decide that but yeah. is it our place to step in and do something or just step back and oh i know i'm sorry i can't i don't have an answer for that i have seen that also in one of the mataji is in our uh, congregation she's a devotee her husband is not a devotee comes home drunk and he even physically assaults her and she is completely okay with it i'm like what what are you doing yeah. so i know what you're saying it's like sometimes you want to help some people don't want help and you know there's also this uh, what is that uh, what is that what is that syndrome i forget stockholm syndrome yeah. <laughs> stockholm syndrome is so common and then i think we can't fix the world we can't change the whole world but we can do our we can play our small part some people we can help some we can't so one should stay mm. away is what you're trying to say no i'm saying do what you can but <coughs> but you can't just accept okay uh, because as a preacher as a traveling preacher i know i'm i sometimes feel helpless but then i feel theek hai yaar jahan pe ho sakta hai you know like a farmer you plant you don't you plant seeds so the soil is fertile you just don't i mean you, you can't just and i have tried that and i tried to help someone and i see but i'll tell you something if you if you genuinely try to help someone because you don't know whether that person is receptive in the first place or not i have seen that nothing goes waste krishna assures in the gita neya vikrama nashosti pratyavayo na vidyate swalpam if you are sincerely trying to help someone there is no waste because what will happen is if not now later it will awaken so thoda to help you should do something like it's like you know i'll tell you a simple example if the grass is wet and you light fire will it catch fire no but something good will happen it will become moist if there is moist grass and you light fire will it catch fire no but something good will happen it will become dry if there is dry grass you light fire will it catch fire 
yes so when you meeting someone you don't know whether he is he or she is dry grass moist or wet but you light fire of truth justice krishna consciousness light the fire of satya if she is a wet grass at least she'll become moist so there is no waste i've seen that so many times you know sometimes i've broken i told someone about something kuch farak nahi pada and there sometimes i'm not even trying to help but he wants all the help i feel oh kain to you know we're all part of a big plan we're all part of a very big plan like you know when i'm distributing books bhagavad gita you know sometimes i'm convincing someone for 2 hours a gita is and he listens to me very respectfully politely and after 2 hours he says i don't want the book <laughs> and then one day i was sitting in the station railway station at jogeshwari i remember tired and one man comes up to me pats me on the shoulder says i want 10 gitas and i'm like i didn't even tell him so i realized oh just like i'm telling someone and he's saying no somebody else must have gone to him and this man must have said no 100 times somebody must have told him and then he must have realized that he wants to take and then he's come to me so no effort goes vain if you are an instrument of goodness if you know that you are part of a big plan if you think i am the controller i'm going to change the world then that's going that's going to be miserable for misery for that person also and misery for you also but if i understand i'm part of sankirtan which is i am an instrument in the lord's big plan then you will be able to spread goodness with detachment and you will help someone some people you won't be able to help but you know that you tried something good, good, good going to happen like you know in our ashram the door was stuck and 10 of us that time i was very big i was 85 kg and i was pushing it and there were five or six of us we were all the door just wouldn't open up it wouldn't fall in we were trying to it was stuck and then we were tired and we sat down and then one brahmachari his name is nityananda bro he is very thin we joke always about him that he's come from somalia relief camp he is very thin and we were all tired and we were sitting and then he comes and he just touched the door and the door fell so is he so strong that he could push the what happened was we had done all the work before sometimes after a after a cyclone after a big storm a crow comes and sits on a branch and the branch falls is the crow so strong no so many other factors cause so if you as an instrument of in the hands of krishna you go and sincerely help someone who is a victim of abuse and you know it and she is refusing to take help but you have done it sincerely but with detachment and then you are going to the next place meanwhile somebody else tells her somebody else and then eventually you will see that but you will not get the credit and that's what no Every, we are all part of a big plan none of us want credit we all are part of a big plan so if we are doing our good if you are contributing to the goodness on this planet krishna will uh, reciprocate is that okay hare krishna yes megna you have to tell me when to stop stop okay fine so per serious to hand we'll take one question yeah. i do fourth five things i can share with you what i do first is awareness okay i'll repeat her question she says i said in the class that sometimes when you are in discomfort and pain instead of immediately seeking relief through insta reels and youtube and whatsapp you know why don't you just sit with that pain and see that you know allow it to sink in and then you feel actually more nourished rather than seeking relief so what i do is i i follow this few steps first is awareness i i say you know for example recently uh, three three devotees had misunderstood one of the proposals i had given and a lot of misunderstanding happened and i was insecure i became fearful so when i was going through this fear instead of rushing to the phone i sat on the bench outside my room and i practice awareness my mind is now insecure awareness means separating yourself from your mind my mind is now afraid that i will lose this service my mind is now afraid that they'll judge me wrongly my mind is now my mind is saying all of this awareness and after awareness i practice what is called as acceptance acceptance means i accept that i am in misery this is a self talk i do i accept that my mind is in misery and it's okay i accept i accept and then third thing is more difficult i allow that thought to remain 
I say now I allow the mind to feel insecure. I allow it's okay. Because anyway the mind is going to do what it wants to do. If you resist it, the more you resist, the more it persists. So I I'm aware, I accept it, I allow. And then I connect to my aspiration. My aspiration is to whatever, you know, I've got my vision, I've got my values. I connect to that. And then the fifth one is I perform an action which is consistent with my values and my vision. And again my mind screams, again I pause. Awareness, acceptance, allow, aspiration and action. So acceptance is the key here. You know, many of us, we don't want to accept. We live in denial. That's why we rush to the phone, no? Denial is the biggest lie because that is the lie we tell ourselves. So denial is extremely so when you accept it punches the mind's rant. Immediately when you say my mind is in misery, I am in trouble, it's okay. You accept your vulnerability, you become more authentic to yourself. And vulnerability is a big strength. Generally we want to put up a brave front. I'm in control of my emotions. Arjuna was vulnerable, Arjuna broke down. And it's okay to be weak, you know. So therefore, awareness, acceptance and allowing means going deeper into that acceptance. Then you will be surprised, the mind changes. You know, mind, mind has another thing to, because mind doesn't like to be punctured. Awareness, acceptance and allowing punctures the mind. And then uh, you connect your aspiration, your values. It becomes easier. Is that okay? These are the self-talk you could try. We'll stop here. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in our monthly classes the glad classes that we have, Gita lessons and discussions. And I feel so inspired and I'm very grateful to Gaurwani Prabhu for being here also. And we'll take part in Sankirtan now. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Sharinam Sankirtan Ki Jai.